And there's a big countdown to us starting the quiz. Hello, I am doing, I don't know why, but I am doing every single YouTube Creator Academy course. And here's what they look like. There are 41 courses. And at the end of each one, there's a course exam. I am going to do one every single week this year in real time on here so that you can follow along and play along with me. And today it's course exam number two. It's the second one I'm doing, Get Discovered. We've got search and discovery, effective thumbnails and titles, smart descriptions, cards and end screens, uploads, playlists, and collaboration. Hello, I'm Neil Mossy and I'm a development producer helping high achieving creators and performers just like you to, let's do a double one, <laughs> to get ideas out of your head and out onto here on YouTube to make the world a happier place. So the clock has hit zero. I'm in the game show mood. I've got my London weekend t-shirt on. Let's get the other music going. Question one, what do you call the combination of title, description, tags, and thumbnail? Search data, metadata, video data, or channel data? Now we're just gonna play along, but if you feel strongly about any of the answers, put them in the, in the comments. For this one, I'm going to go for metadata. Let's try that and I'll hit next. The Creator Academy course doesn't give you uh, any kind of validation or answer as you go along. And it just tells you at the end whether or not you've failed or passed. So fingers crossed, let's, uh, let's not mess this one up. Question two. You've created a new video about how to make the perfect tiara. What characteristics should you consider when finalizing your title? Create the longest title possible. More characters are always better. Include popular search terms, even if they aren't related to your video because this will improve search results. Your title really doesn't matter if you have a fantastic thumbnail. Or keep your title short and relevant. Which one would you go for? I'm going to go for the last option. Keep your title short and relevant. Although, I don't know, you know, longest title means you can cram more good words in. <laughs> I'll hit next. True or false? This is question three. Creating misleading titles, thumbnails and or descriptions is a great way to get your videos discovered. True or false? Go for false. Next, question four. Larry can't create a new video each week. However, he wants his subscribers to see activity on his channel. What are some actions that Larry can take to keep his what to watch and my subscriptions sections active? I, I watch a lot of YouTube and I, I don't think I've ever seen what to watch. Have you seen it? Put, put it in the comments. Maybe I'm being really dense and I've, I've just not watched it. How can you keep your what to watch and my subscriptions sections active? Like or comment on videos. Tweet out with a relevant hashtag. Upload daily, even if it isn't the best quality. Or regularly change thumbnails. I'm gonna go with like or comment on videos. I like doing that anyway. Say hello. If you've got a channel, say hello. <laughs> we want to see your channel. Third of the way through already. This has got a good feeling about this one. <laughs> I don't know what we win. I'll, I'll think of something by the end of the 41 videos. Daria the Diva has just uploaded a new video masterpiece. I've got Beavis and Butthead in my head. Do you remember Daria? <laughs> Daria. To attract viewers, she wants to create the perfect thumbnail. What advice would you give to Daria? Be sure to include people in her thumbnail because that always results in more clicks. Be sure to use the thumbnail YouTube suggests because that one is always best. Be sure to use a custom thumbnail that is clear and compelling or be sure to include some text in the thumbnail because that will make it more click friendly. Which one do you think for the perfect thumbnail I think I'm gonna go for, be sure to use a custom thumbnail that's clear and compelling. By the way, I hate the thumbnails that I'm making for these videos. Uh, please, if you've got any ideas for them, put them in the comments because it's, it's difficult. There's a lot of text to get in. I wanna get me in. There isn't a lot here to play with in terms of images. Maybe I should like wear a game show host outfit or something, I don't know. Question six. When crafting your title, where should you include relevant and descriptive keywords? At the beginning, in the middle, at the end, or placement doesn't matter. 
Now I'm going to go for at the beginning because YouTube can truncate your title. So I'm going to go for that. Question seven of the 15. Series playlists help inform the YouTube algorithm about the order in which to display content to a viewer. Series playlists can't be posted outside of YouTube. Series playlists can include videos from other channels and series playlists can be downloaded by the most active subscribers. Now I did the course for this course exam. There's a link to it in the description below. I wasn't up on series playlists about how they work. So I'm going to go for the first answer. Series playlists help inform the YouTube algorithm. Which feature, question eight, which feature would you add to your video when speaking a call to action on screen? A card, credit, metadata or playlist? Which feature would you add to your video when saying a call to action on screen? I would add a card. Like this one, I'll add a, a card. <laughs> this is the video I'm feeling good about at the moment. Question nine. What's a benefit of creating playlists? Playlists help to organize your YouTube analytics. Playlists allow you to organize your channel and give your audience a personalized experience. Playlists allow you to create personalized videos for your audience or playlists help you connect your AdSense account. I'm gonna go for the second answer. Playlists allow you to organize your channel and give your audience a personalized experience. Stick with this, we've got five more to go, we can do this. Where can you go to see which keywords viewers are using to find your video? Traffic sources in YouTube Analytics, YouTube Metadata, Google Trends, or the library. <laughs> Where can you go to see which keywords viewers are using? I would go to traffic sources in YouTube analytics. Next, question 11. YouTube may remove videos that violate our community guidelines. True or false? Yeah, I think YouTube may review, <laughs> may review, I can't say it. Question 12, final three. What is a benefit of organizing videos into sections? It allows you to change the contents of video after uploaded. It increases total watch time for content on the channel. It makes it easier for people to choose videos to watch or results in more subscribe to your channel. <laughs> it's always good when it results in more subscribe. I think, I think it makes it easier for people to choose videos to watch. And I'll tell you why. I've made a whole video about organizing videos into sections. And I don't think most of us know that they're called sections. I just call them rows of videos <laughs> on my channel homepage. But if you want to add those rows to your channel, just click on the link in the description or it's on screen now. That was a fun one to make but I think I'm gonna go for that one. Makes it easier for people to choose videos to watch. Which of the following tactics would you not use to design an image that encourages viewers to click on your thumbnail? Adjust the contrast, brightness, and saturation levels to create pale images. I do do that a bit. <laughs> Consider adding your branding and or some descriptive text to the image. Upload high resolution files so images display clearly at all sizes or use the rule of thirds to compose interesting and dynamic images. I think I'll go for the pale images. Penultimate question, question 14. Why would you want to avoid clickbait in your thumbnails and titles? The truth. <laughs> Why would you want to avoid clickbait? This can turn away some viewers who find it unappealing. This impacts how your video is recommended to new viewers. This sets the wrong expectations about what's in the content or all of the above. I think I'll go for all of the above as a consumer of clickbait. Finally, last question. How do advertiser friendly thumbnails and titles affect monetization. Only advertisers of specific products can run ads on mature content. Advertisers pay higher rates if you mention them in your video title. Advertisers can opt out of keywords that don't align to their brand. Or no advertiser would ever want to be associated with a controversial topic. I am going to go for advertisers can opt out of keywords that don't align to their brand. Let's click submit.
quiz complete. How did you how did you do? Leave me a comment, let me know. Are these questions easy, hard? Now, unfortunately, it doesn't tell me which questions I got right and which ones I got wrong, but it does say <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> I've got a letter of completion. Hey, I've got my other one. This is my letter of completion from last week. I actually printed it out. You could hear me printing it out, but I didn't show it on camera. So now we've got two of them. All of these course exams are on this playlist here. And right here is what YouTube thinks you should be spending time on next.